Hello, everyone. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about books and the role that books play in our lives today and a really interesting change that's happening in this unpowered uh, static device. Um, these guys here didn't have access to some form of reproduction technology other than biological. They c c struggled with speech and generally got stuck in a loop that lasted about 100,000 years. They certainly didn't understand what uh, hashtags were. Um, and pretty much all they had was scratching on walls. Now these are quite social activities, you know, they got to do them with their family, but if they wanted to share it, they had to take someone down into a dark cave, and it wasn't really that portable. Um, so difficult to use as a medium. There was a little bit of an improvement when somebody managed to chisel off a bit of a slate one day and realized they could carry it out of the cave and then show it to somebody else and then sort of start scratching around with it um, and writing developed and uh, you know we have the Ten Commandments and everything else that follows. There was a bit of an improvement when somebody realized they could use the, the basket that their mother had woven and turn it into paper which was very portable. A little bit of a problem though, your history tends to disintegrate, which is why we have a lot of European and ancient Greek history, but not a lot of Chinese history, because the Chinese were more advanced, and they did it on paper and it all died. Um, obviously, the big breakthrough was a movable type, which happened in the late Middle Ages. Uh, some German gentlemen invented that and burns their fingers a lot, but they were able to sort of break the monopoly that the monks had over reproducing books. And, uh, and then, of course, fast forwarding, we had this amazing artistic breakthrough when we could freeze time with this little box. And that had a massive impact on art. It ushered in the era of modernism, many would argue. Um, my favorite uh, device is actually the instant self-publisher, which generates a Polaroid, which you can take out and share with people. A little hard to copy, but you know, if it's the punk era, you could always photocopy it. So I, I really like the Polaroid, and I'm kind of disappointed that they sort of faded away. Um, and of course, the really massive one, which we've all did, you know, we all did if you're over 40, you went to a computer show and you played with Mac Paint and you changed the font. So it completely revolutionized the publishing industry right with that one development of the GUI and the, the, the research at Palo Alto. So let's get to the topic here, which is self-publishing, where we're talking about making something like this using that other thing, the intertubes that we all know and love. Um, and uh, here's, we've got a, a relativity formula there, I think. Um, Self-expression is a big part of self-publishing, as in you don't have three rather anally retentive editors clutching their Starbucks telling you why your book sucks. They're actually, you're just allowing yourself to put yourself out there like a child does without any self-editing. Um, it's also a creative process. Now, obviously, this is relative to you, and this particular gentleman really likes orange-colored washing machines. And that's creative to him. But, you know, it is very much like your crew, your posse, they're going to appreciate it. It also needs to be an object, you know? Like, it's complete. It's sort of finished. There, I could give it to someone and they could unwrap it and they think, great, that's a finished, complete thing that you've made for me. So I think that's a very important aspect of, of a book. And it should be really, really simple for you to duplicate it which was the problem with the caves and the stone tablets and the paper to some extent. It should be literally a click of the mouse and some great machine out there in the cloud just spits out a whole bunch of really nicely bound copies. And the other cool thing about self-publishing is instead of spending $50,000 on ordering 2,500 copies and then only selling five of them and having to pulp 2,495, it's on demand. So you're only making and using the material and energy that you need at the time that you're doing the publishing. So I also want this book to be beautiful. And this is a book that I made um, about the story of my son coming to grips with the arrival of his younger sister. And this is a really important moment in my life. You know, here's my little daughter here. And I want it to be absolutely beautiful. And I want it to be like a coffee table book. Uh, now, I don't want to have to deal with all these people. I don't want to have to go to a publisher and suck up to them. I don't want to have lunch with a, an agent. I don't want to, you know, yes, they have a distribution network, but hang on, you know, it's 2009. Um, we've got these things. And we can funnel these books down those little tubes. And we can find people who might be interested in buying them off us. So another aspect of self-publishing is, of course, selling your work through the intertubes. Um, now, basically, instead of 
chiseling on stone tablets or dealing with mashing up paper and trying to dry it in the sun, we can just do it with the click of a mouse. And um, there's a whole lot of great services coming out uh, in this space. I encourage you to make a book, tell a story, and if you'd like a hand, I have some great little free vouchers that I can give you to help you with your first book. So just come and see me afterwards. Thanks everyone, it was a lot of fun.